So PCQI, when working with this particular requirement and you're putting your programs together, your policies and procedures, uh, these are the type of things that we need to take a look at. Here we go again. Hello again, PCQI, and welcome back to our All About Compliance channel in our segment GMP training, in our food category, subsection personnel, cleanliness, jewelry, and other objects. So PCQI on this one, we are on Title 21 CFR Part 117, which is our CGMP Harpsy for Human Food. We are on Subpart B of our Current Good Manufacturing Practices section uh, under Section 117.10 Personnel and subsection B cleanliness and we're going to be talking about sub subsection 4 which is uh, unsecured jewelry and other objects so let's begin cleanliness all persons working in direct contact with food food contact surfaces and food packaging materials must conform to hygienic practices while on duty to the extent necessary to protect against allergen cross contact and against contamination of food the methods for maintaining cleanliness include removing all unsecured jewelry and other objects that might fall into food, equipment, or containers, and removing hand jewelry that cannot be adequately sanitized during periods in which food is manipulated by hand. If such hand jewelry cannot be removed, it may be covered by material which can be maintained in an intact, clean, and sanitary condition and which effectively protects against the contamination by these objects of the food, food contact surfaces, or food packaging materials. So PCQI, when working with this particular requirement and you're putting your programs together, your policies and procedures, uh, these are the type of things that we need to take a look at. One is your, obviously, your jewelry policy. You know, what does that look like? Do you allow uh, wedding rings? Do you allow watches, earrings? Uh, what about necklaces, um, you know, uh, eyeglasses, uh, things like that. Uh, nowadays, it's common practice where I see uh, a lot of personnel with their cell phone uh, because it's part of their process that they're either using it uh, to communicate with other team members via text and whatnot uh, or part of their app. Those are very popular now where they are carried on. Uh, and they're utilizing it to perform verification activity with their uh, automation digitization of their forms. So what, what, what are those look like? Because they're above the waste uh, that could fall into the food, the equipment, uh, or containers and whatnot. So what, what is that in particular? So as a PCQI, we need to take a look at those. What about wedding bands that you know uh, uh, teammates refuses to to remove? As you can see, I don't wear one for the fact that uh, you know it, I've been in and out of a lot of food facilities, and it was just basically I gave in <laughs> because I have to clean inside the ring and, and things like that. So so what is your policy for that, right? So uh, you know what are what are those. Uh, uh, written procedures for in this event I just mentioned you know cleaning uh, cleaning in between the ring and my skin um, you know or, or, or putting a band-aid over it or am I double gloving uh, for that you know what what is your uh, particular policy for that and how do you you know maintain uh, in this case effectively protects against the contamination by these objects right so that's one. So after that, let's look at uh, other objects, uh, pens, right? Some people, they put it behind their ear. Sometimes it's just a habit or they put it, you know, uh, as you can see, I have a pocket here. Is that allowed? Probably not, right? And some in some of our lab coats or uh, outer garments were issued. They are, they're, they're pocket list. Uh, I've seen them, the pocket are inside. Uh, so you can, you know, uh, secure these type of uh, uh, writing utensils and whatnot. So what, what does that look like, you know, for storage? Do you allow those type of activities or those type of objects 
to be exposed. So, uh, you know, take a look at those uh, other objects, uh, you know, when it comes uh, to that. Slight tidbit on the cell phone. Uh, so some of the best practices I've seen with our PCQI on the field is they actually have a, an integrity check because it is allowed, you know, and they're not, a, because they're just there to verify. They're not really touching uh, the food products and whatnot. So when they're doing their verification, they have an SOP of to check the integrity of the phone uh, for glass, uh, you know, uh, mi missing pieces. Uh, some of them even take photos of it daily so they can actually show proof that, you know, that that particular uh, piece of equipment or device uh, has been checked. So, you know, I've, we've seen a lot of best practices uh, uh, in conforming to the, you know, foreign object and, and jewelry control. Um, anyway, so give me your thoughts of what you're doing in your facility, you know, for our uh, audiences and viewers, and we can share these type of techniques. Uh, email me at info at consultarinc.com or simply comment below. We appreciate it. Uh, and once again, PCQ, I thank you for your viewership and support. Uh, and also, if you see value in these uh, videos uh, that we're posting, kindly share uh, and subscribe uh, to the channel so you can be informed on the new upcoming ones. We're uploading uh, on a daily basis as much as we can because it's such a huge topic and requirement in our food safety management system. Well, till then, PCQI, thank you for your time and be great today. Contact us and don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. Thanks again, PCQIs. Have a good one.